Today we're going to do something a little different for our classic tabletop RPG series. Specifically, we have to address the elephant in the room when it comes to classic travelers. Now, those of you who have been playing this game for the time that it's been out or have played it a couple times, you probably can guess what I'm about to talk about. But maybe you've heard about Traveler, but you've never played it, or you've never heard about Traveler, and you're just coming to the scene brand spanking new. As a matter of fact, this might be your first time coming to the channel. Well, before we get into all of that, let me first welcome you, dear viewer, to RPG Elite. My name is Servant of Shiloh, and this is the place where I focus on putting the RP back into RPG, and the way that I do that is by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture. Today, it's gonna to be a mix. It's gonna be a mix about some real talk. It's gonna be a mix on some tips because of what we're going to address is it, it can't be considered as pure and yet it can be considered fundamental. Let's get to this elephant and take it down one bite at a time. All right, so what is it I'm talking about? It is this, and it's something that if you are going to get the game, you're interested in getting the game and you're watching the series to see if that's the case, or maybe you've already bought the game, haven't cracked it open yet, but you're excited to do so, okay? You need to know this. The elephant in the room is that Classic Traveler has no character progression system. So what that means is that after you go through the character generation process, which we went through last week, that's it. That is your character for life. What? That is the way that it's supposed to stay. If we're gonna keep it pure and just go to what the core book says, then that's it. You hit. No. I don't believe it. Even if you muster out and you're 26 years old, you will not get any better. There is no improvement of skills. There is no improvement of any of your personal attributes. That is just it. And you are hit. Take it. It's not possible. And of course, that's a little bit of a problem. Now, of course, people back in the day saw this and they were like, yo, how can I improve my character? And there was a response from a developer. I'm not sure which one it was, but I'm going to address the comment. And I'm paraphrasing this comment, so it's not verbatim, but it's pretty close. But this comment in reference to there being no character progression in Classic Traveler, well, well, let's just get to it. So back in the day, people asked, well, how can I improve my character? And the response from the developer was this. Well, it's not the character that gets better, it's the player. I mean, if you want to go through all of that, then you might want to get with your referee and, you know, work something out with them. Is that right? Okay, that comment, that comment to me says three things. Let me address all three of them. Number one, if there was a list in terms of this is the reason why we didn't include this in this tabletop RPG, and it was a list of the lamest things that you could say, that would be somewhere near the top. Ouch. All right, the whole fact of the player gets better, not the character. Listen, this is a role-playing game. And if you understand the term role-playing, then you understand that you are taking on a persona. Therefore, the very issue here is that you are not yourself anymore. This is not about you and nobody's interested in you anymore. We're interested in the character. <laughs> you serious? We're interested in seeing this character grow. The only way they're gonna be able to do that is to see them go through these adventures and for them to get better at their stats, their attributes maybe, or their skills or whatever it is. That's what role playing is. That's a part of the role playing. It's part of the low level role playing, but it's part of it. That's a lame excuse, lame excuse. But it also tells me this, 
this person may not be so concerned about the player base. I mean, this was back in the 70s, people were asking this question and this is the response that you get? Oh, well, work it out with your referee. Really, dude? Really? I don't know who it was specifically. I can hazard a good guess who said that, but since I don't know for sure, I won't say anything. That just, it, it, that's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. It, it speaks of a lack of concern for your player base. You just want their money. I'm just saying, that's how it looks like from this end. But it speaks to something that's even more egregious in my eye, right? Maybe they had a bad day that day and maybe they've been hearing this all along and they just got tired of it and they were just irritated or whatever. Okay, I can, I can excuse that. But I can't excuse this, especially not as an RPG elite. And that is that your statement clearly is one of an individual who is looking at this as a war game, not as a role player. Now, as a developer, you come out with a game, you stick the term role playing on it, but you expect people to play it like a war game. Now, granted, I understand all of where the movement came from for role playing games came out of war games get that totally get that but if you wanted it to be a war game should have made it as one don't put role playing on the box and then expect people to war game because those of us who actually understand what role playing is even back then because back then i understood what role playing is this isn't anything new for me in terms of role playing i've always done this because I've always understood the definition. Now, I'm not gonna get into the definition right now. I've got plenty of videos for you to go and look at. You can take a look at a couple of these. I'll have a link down in the description below and you can take a look at them. But what this says to me is this player, this individual, whoever said this, is number one, at best, a low level role player. Number two, probably and more than likely a tabletop RPG abuser. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, got a video on that too. And that also will be down link in the description below. I am, if, if that's how you want to play your games, that's how you want to play your games, but don't put role playing on the box. That's just me, y'all. So those are three problems that I find with the statement. There's more, but I'm just going to leave it at those three. So a lot of people heard that statement and was like, well, that ain't satisfactory for me. And I feel you, <laughs> it's not satisfactory for me either. I just gave you three reasons why. So there's three approaches to this problem of classic traveler. Even though I am critical of the statement, it doesn't mean I'm gonna tell you to go and not, you know, don't play classic traveler because of this, that, no, no. Man, I have a game in my top three favorite games video, which I did a little while ago. I love those games. I could play those games for the rest of my life, not play another tabletop RPG. But listen now, I have a 30 page addendum of things that I have done for one of those games. It might be 32 now. Just things that I wanted to add to the game that it didn't have. And I thought that, you know, some things were just kind of not right. All right. So I went through and over time added things and Hey, we're good to go. Very happy with where it's at right now. And I love that game. But that game had issues, it had problems. And of course, not having a fundamental thing like character progression and development in your mechanics, okay, that's an issue. That is a problem. So, there is a way to approach this and still love the game. I still love Traveler. I, I like Traveler as a science fiction setting, I still think it is good. It's the granddaddy, y'all. And it did a good job when it first came out. It's just that that statement was whack, period. But let's get to how do we approach this then? Well, there's three ways you can approach it. Three tips on how you can approach this issue of not having a character progression system in Classic Traveler. If you're still interested and you should be because Classic Traveler is still the bomb when it comes to a science fiction setting. So. Let's lay out these three ways that you can approach this issue.
All right, so the first way that you can approach this issue is don't, <laughs> just don't even mess with it and deal with it as it is. So that's, I mean, you can approach it like that. There are many people who've been playing Traveler. There is no character progression system. So if they mustered out at, you know, eight years or whatever, and they're 26 years old, they just don't get any better. They might give them more rewards or something like that, or they might give them more, you know, credits in their expeditions or adventures, whatever. All right, I mean, if that's how you wanna play, do your thing. To me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hey, if you guys are having fun, do your thing. So that's one way, don't do nothing. Second way is to create your own system. Now, if you are brand spanking new to Traveler and you're brand new to tabletop RPGs, I really don't suggest doing this, especially for Traveler. There's a couple of reasons for that. Main reason for me though, is how one level of expertise and a skill is not the same across the board. I talked about this in the last video in the series when I did character generation with Aria. It's not the same. So, you know, level one expertise in auto pistol is not the same as level one expertise in engineering, which is not the same as level one expertise in forward observer. So you are gonna have to work that out in the mechanics. And if you're brand new to tabletop RPGs, that might be just a little bit much for you to handle which is why that whole thing about, well, work it out with the referee. Well, what if they're brand new? They don't even know what's up. All right, there's gotta be a better alternative. And there is. And this is kind of the route that many people took when that response was given. So let's take a look at the third approach. Now there were different versions of Classic Traveler and we're starting with the starter set, right? The starter set is actually books one, two, and three of Traveler. The third approach actually comes in book four. That's called Mercenary. This particular supplement for Classic Traveler, and it is specifically for Classic Traveler, is if you wanna be a mercenary, it's got new skills and other things like that. It also has a skill training section. And here is what you can use just right out the box if that's how you want to use it or you can tweak it now i'm going to give you a couple of ways to tweak it here in a second but let me give you the cliff notes on how this works so you would go find an instructor the instructor has to have the instructor skill and also has to have the skill that you are looking to improve for your character and it has to be higher than what your character is in and it has to be a certain level higher get to that in a second now, this is supposed to be a six week intense training course. And in the book Mercenary, that's supposed to be to get it to skill one. So if you just want a new skill, then six week crash course, boom, there it is. And then you have to roll a nine or higher in order to see whether you passed. There are other things that come into play. An intelligence of eight plus, that'll give you a, a DM of plus one, 10 plus will also give you a DM of plus one, so on and so forth. Now, here's the caveat. The caveat is that the instructor, in order to train you in something that you already have, they have to be two levels higher than you because they can only train you one level lower than they are. So let me give you an example. Aria, last week, she had engineering of three, which is pretty darn good. Now, if she wanted to go to engineering of four, she would have to find somebody who would have an engineering of five because that individual could only train her up to one level lower than what they have. It would probably be pretty hard for them to find somebody with a level of five. Again, we'll get to that in a second. So that is the basics of that system. And it's a skill training system. Now it doesn't say anything about the attributes and things like that. That's something that you can work out. It's probably a supplement out there that you can work out. So you won't have to do that though, because if you just do what I just said and just kind of write this out, you should be good to go from day one if you're new to Traveler. But here's some tweaks 
I wanna give you a couple of tweaks to that mercenary system. And these are just suggestions. You can you know, use them as jump off points or prompts to change the system as you would see fit. But I just gave you the basic meat and potatoes of the mercenary system and how you can use it for skill progression. So let's get to my personal tips on how to tweak this. So the first thing that I would do is to make sure that the characters have to pay because in the mercenary system, that's if they're training to be one. So they go through that to get their level one of something, but they're out of the service now. So now if they're out of the service, they're in the private sector. You got to pay a brother. Show me the money. Pay me, pay me. Mm -hmm. Make sure they have to come out of pocket for this stuff, which means that this is just motivation for them to go on more, you know, adventures or expeditions or missions, whatever. So they can pay to become better at the skills that they have or just to acquire new skills. Another thing that you may want to do is you may want to make the pay reflect the level of the skill of the instructor. So if it's just a level two instructor who wants to get you to level one, then it, it might not, maybe it's just 10,000, right? But if it's trying to get you to level two, maybe it's 20, level three is 30, so on and so forth, that it goes up and up and up and up, the more that you wanna go up and up and up and up. Then there is findings that instructor. Maybe the lower instructors, there are probably a lot of them, but the higher tier instructors, yeah, they're gonna be rare. And so I would take a page from the psionic section where you have to actually search for the Institute. And I would say, okay, um, if it's a population of nine plus or something, you'll probably get a DM of plus one to try to find somebody that's an expert at that. But it still would be hard, you know, give it a relatively hard, like nine plus eight plus something like that to actually find these instructors in these areas. Maybe you have to do a whole trip and the trip itself is an adventure just to go and get your skill up. Now, obviously these skills are going to take time. And as it says in the mercenary system, it takes six weeks to get up to level one. So the next thing I would do is, you guessed it, I would increase the time for every level that they want to increase their skill. So level one, it would be that six weeks. For level two, and I'm just going off the top of the mind right now, it would be 12 weeks. Let's just double it. And level three, 18 weeks, so on and so forth. So obviously all of this stuff is happening offline. This is happening off camera. This is not happening during an adventure. So increase the time, increase the money, and then have some kind of search mechanic the higher up that you go. The lower you go, it should be pretty common. These are just suggestions. You can go ahead and tweak it however you so desire, but I would use that mercenary system kind of as a base, tweak it for however you want to do it and then go about your business. So there it is. We've tackled the elephant in the room. And again, even though they don't have something that's fundamental to almost every tabletop RPG that's out there, you can get around this. We always get around this stuff. We've been getting around this stuff for decades, right? If something wasn't there, we were like, okay, well, let's make it up right now. Let's see how we are going to do it in our campaign. That's how you get over these things. But sometimes you have to use something that's already there, tweak it a little bit. That's a lot easier. And then you can go on about your business. Well, if you got some value out of this video, maybe you learned something new. Can you do a, me a solid? Can you just that little, that little thumb down there, down there, can you do me a solid? and just crush the like button. Crush that button for me, please. Also, hey, if you wanna stick around, you're saying, hey, nah, this guy's not bad. He ain't too crazy. He hasn't offended me yet. So uh, just go ahead and click the subscribe button. And while you're at it, you might as well go ahead and click the notification bell too. Woohoo! Now, let's do the question of the vid. I'm giving you three approaches to this lack of a character development or progression mechanic in Classic Traveler. So what would be the way that you would approach this? 
And if you've got some tips, maybe you have been playing for a while and you guys have already worked out a system, share that down in the comments below, especially for new players who don't know nothing about nothing about this game. And they're like, oh man, do I have to make up a new system? Or you know, do I have to go out and get mercenary? You really don't have to do that stuff. Help them out y'all with comments down below so that everybody can get in on the fun and the grandness of Classic Traveler. That is going to do it for me. Y'all know what's up. A brother just gotta do snag a puss. The Wixit, Hey, if you have a session this weekend, I hope it is an RPG Elite session, y'all. And if you wanna get in on this Classic Tabletop RPG series for Classic Traveler, here, couple videos right here. I mean, really, just two videos right now. That's it for me. Hey, a brother has got to say peace. 5,000 leets. I am.